Uh, over there, oh, exactly. How are you? How is everything? Better. Yeah, I'm listening. You're listening to me? So the, the network is a little bit bad? The connection is a little bit... Uh, it's not very good. I, 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 can, yeah, he I can hear you. I don't know if, if it's from me or it's from, from you. No, I don't think so. Okay, okay, perfect. Let me, let me talk about... Um, um, about your last uh, lost fight that you fought against uh, Tomas Jakubiec. Uh, can you tell me about, uh, mm -hmm. about uh, that fight so quick and fast? Uh, uh, do you think that you were winning the fight? Yeah, it was uh, one... Yeah, I would think like that. First of all, um, uh, it was against a very, very good fighter, one of the best Polish, you know, welterweights. We also trained together with Tomek uh, when I was uh, training last year in uh, in uh, Poland. Uh, it's a very good guy, you know. I have to tell some things. But as as for the fight, it was a great fight. You know, three rounds back and forth, me and him, very very good fight. I think I won that fight because I made the most uh, how much, you know. Mm -hmm. you yeah. Hear me? yeah, yeah, I hear you. Uh, so what I think I made, I, I, like I, I made the most damage, like with kicking and punching and stuff like that. Um, he scored some takedowns, and you know the judges are the judges. If you look to the judges, sometimes because because now you have a three win streak, and uh, so uh, if that fight was a win, it would be a more than three win streak. It so would uh, be like five, five in a row. Uh, exactly, like exactly. Down. But that fight was in Walter Wade, huh? If I remember, yeah, welterweight, welterweight, yeah. yeah. Sometimes you you fighting also middleweight. You prefer welterweight or middleweight? You know, I think is. Yeah. I I have done many weights. Uh, sometimes I fight jiu jitsu in. You know, it's it's like physical uh, weight cutting. Like you you wait and you fight uh, straight. So I believe uh, it's a little bit unhealthy to to cut many kilos. But uh, I perform better in 77 uh, when I fight very good opponents like in um, outside of Greece. I'm faster, you know, I have good endurance, I have uh, more power. But uh, when I come to 84, I'm less stressed. Yeah, yeah, true. I, I am not stressed about the weight. I, I enjoy more my training, my camps, stuff like that. And, and when... You know? But... Uh, yeah, tell me. It's a very bad connection. It's a very bad connection. You hear me? Your one is... Yeah, sometimes I cannot control all the network. Are you hear me? Yeah. And can you tell me, can you tell me today you have 32... You have 32 years old. Hello, hello. Uh, very shame. Sorry, guys. I'm not expecting this. But um, we have... Now it's better, I think. Now yeah. it's better. So I was saying today you have 30 years old. You have uh, no, almost... 32, 32. 32. You have almost 27, 28 fights. Uh, so, what what you can say that from six seven years ago and today, what are you more better right now? Uh, I'm I'm sure better as far as you're talking about my game, right? Uh, for sure, I'm better in my mental thinking. I know how how to to mix it better inside the the octagon. Uh, as every year passes, I'm getting better to boxing, to jiu jitsu, you know, all this stuff because I'm training with all these aspects. But uh, as it comes in the fighting game, it's not to be, it's my opinion, you know? Yeah. It's not only to be very good at boxing or at kickboxing or whatever you like, but to combine them and to have a very good strategic and mental thing, you know? Yeah. yeah. Very hard. Because some years ago, I was, you know, younger, and it also depends on the person. It, this happened to me for sure. I was sometimes overreacting, you know? Yeah. Like, um, I don't know, I was overwhelming sometimes. And sometimes it was good, uh, but sometimes it was not. Um, 
but to have a plan and have a strategy in this game is very important. A much more better welterweight or middleweight? Um, I have, you know, the truth is that, that I have uh, very good wins in 77 and also in 84. I think in 77 a little bit better. Um, but it depends if it's uh, the opportunity is good or uh, my opponent is very good. I also I always like to fight at 77. I don't have problem, you know, to cut weight and stuff like that. Yeah, and you are right now in Greece. Uh, you are you are maybe two, three fighters who are the uh, big names over there. You are among among of uh, those guys, and um, as we know, uh, maybe some people, uh, some fans didn't know or forget it or didn't see that coming. But uh, you 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 had uh, normally the the offer to fight uh, to. Uh, to Bellator Israel, but it was in short notice. Huh? Yeah, we we can, like yeah, before, uh, we can uh, mention this. We got also Abu Dhabi Warriors planned for tournaments, uh, but it was 77 kilo, and you were not ready because you were at you were at a middleweight. Mm -hmm. Then you get your last for the Bellator for the Bellator fight for sure. It was 10 days. And yeah. The truth is that when I, especially in such an organization which is very big, you know, like Bellator, I don't want just to to have a fight, I want just to exactly. My, my but I promise you, you're not gonna not get this. Yeah. I promise you, you're gonna get this. But now, just uh, because of this uh, COVID situation, and everything. So uh, I don't know what's gonna happen uh, till the summer. Also, also, I have a, I have a very big fight uh, for for now. It's supposed to happen next week, next Friday. At I'm cage. In against, I think, or it's the top, or it's at the top two best welterweights there, uh, this guy, uh, my opponent, and it, will, it would be the main event in cage. Cage MMA Finn is the best uh, uh, promotion in all Scandinavia, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a very good opportunity. He, he was a high-ranked uh, opponent, and uh, I was sure I would uh, get this. Get Perfect. This very good. So, very good so now, what's the plan now? Mykonos? Giving some class no, I don't know what happened on the today. summer. Stuff, you know? um, You're giving a lot of class to a lot of famous people in uh, Mykonos during the summer. Yeah, I always go there in the summer for one month to make some vacation and to work with uh, some clients in villas, you know, for personal training and stuff like that. It's it's a very good experience, you know, to to do what you love in in a magical place like Mykonos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, you know. Okay. Perfect. Yoannis, thank you very much for your time. Okay. Huh? Keep in touch and sure, I'll call you and uh, let's keep in touch. We have uh, some few plans. Just uh, we'll have to wait a little bit uh, to see how things uh, play out. Sure, okay? Sure. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. So we got uh, Yoannis Paleologos. Now we're going to have Alan Omer. And Alan Omer, we're gonna see if he's there. He's there. There we go. So now it's Alan Omer. I'm waiting, Alan Omer. Alan Omer, what's up? Hello, brother. How are you? Thank you. Can and you? See me? I see you very well. The sun is shining. I cannot see myself here. Really? But I can see Wait. you. Can you please call me again? I cannot see myself. Um, actually, I cannot oh, call actually, you because I'm live. But don't worry. I, I can see you and you're on live. How are you, Alan? But maybe, maybe other people cannot see me. No, they can see you. They can see you. Yeah, okay. they can see you. How okay, are you, Alan? Good. All's good? All good? Everything is good. How are you? Thank you, thank you. Alan, so um, one of the most epic and important fight was uh, against uh, Jay-Z Calvacante. It was uh, maybe almost two, two, three years ago. And um, you did, a, you won the fight. What a performance that day. But as from that, you did not... Man, you did not fight for almost two years. Why? What's happening? Well, uh, the thing after.
the fight was I had a small injury. I had a cut. I had a with my thumbs a little. I I suffer from thumb problems for like five six years. And uh, right after the fight, I had a um, offer for Ryzen uh, at the New Year's Eve uh, event, but uh, I didn't take the offer because I had really problems with my fist and I couldn't punch, and uh, it was really uh, really painful. So I canceled that fight and I. I was also very busy with my business, with uh, my study, so I don't know, time flies very fast as well, so uh, uh, it didn't work out. And the Rising was very good offer at uh, that time, uh, remember, yes. but, uh, but it's happened, it's happened, you know, everything, it's happened always for you a reason. Then, uh, then we got we got a very uh, good offer uh, from uh, uh, the biggest uh, Middle West uh, promotion company uh, UAW Warriors. So can exactly, you? Yes. So we got you know how many fights we got? Sir? We got three fights. Exactly. And uh, we had some a lot of plan. You can explain this a little bit. Yes, there, there were a lot of opportunities and um, uh, like with Ryzen, and I'm sure they still are interested in me. Um, but like for for that reason, we, we chose uh, Abu Dhabi Warriors. Uh, the reason also was because I'm very uh, confirmed. With, I'm very no a little bit known in Abu Dhabi. I had already two fights. I had my UFC debut in Abu Dhabi, so it made sense that I came back to Abu Dhabi with UAE Warriors, and um, we had two good fights, two very good fights, and. Um, we moved forward, they were interested for me to fight for the title uh, and as well in Erbil. We were planning the event in Erbil, a big huge event uh, with yeah. the support of the uh, government in northern Iraq, the Kurdish government. So there were a lot of things coming in front of us in, 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 in the, for the future, but uh, unfortunately you see the coronavirus like stopped everything here exactly. in Europe, exactly. in Iraq, in uh, every country. Unfortunately, we get uh, this uh, bad luck, and then, and then, uh, uh, yeah, you know, we got also between uh, a major league uh, who wanted you also, but uh, it was uh, but because of we signed it with you, our warriors, so it was impossible uh, to to make. Uh, you know, it it was a big plan. We get a good offer with uh, you, our warriors, so uh, it was not make sense that to, we can say to them uh, we're not gonna do. Uh, and then we go to the major league, uh, and then and plus in last uh, short minute fight. So, uh, but at the same time, after that, we got uh, James. He asked you; uh, yeah. they wanted you, and thanks to uh, Denis, he did a huge offer for you, a very huge offer. Yes, a very good offer. I met uh, Dennis as well in, in person, and uh, we had a good talk to each, to each other. And he is very interested uh, in me fighting. For GMC, especially GMC is also planning to come to my hometown in Germany in Stuttgart. So uh, it also made sense, like to fight for GMC and come back after ten years to my home city and fight here in my home city. Um, to be honest, there are still, or there were a lot of good, very, uh, very good and interesting offers, uh, fight-wise, uh, all around the world, and um, like. I was in a comfort zone and I'm still in a comfort zone so I can actually I can choose where I want to fight which one is the best so I have to be smart right now and choose the best promotion yeah. that is good for me yeah because you you and you know it uh, among among all those uh, uh, promotion company who offer us uh, something for you we always discussing uh, the advantage the the negative things and it's also about the period. Where was the period? About where we were. We, we, we put our first step somewhere. Where we say the yes first. And so many things play uh, like this. But, uh, but, but at the end of the day, we have uh, a lot of people that want you. So, um, so yeah. So we're going we're gonna to look forward to, to see uh, the end of the, the, the COVID-19 first. Uh, because that's uh, the most important, and then exactly, yes. and then to see back again uh, with, uh, for example, GMC or maybe uh, maybe some other things. But GMC is uh, right now the first one who uh, 
who, who has a good, good offer. And uh, do you remember the, the, the day that you were uh, supposed to fight for GMC? Uh, the first event they wanted me to fight was in April. I don't hear you. Second network. Do you hear me, Alan? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so bad connection. I'm sorry, very bad connection. So, um, yeah, I'm very sorry. The first one was bad connection. After that was good. The second one, Alan Omer also had a, a bad connection. But as you can see, so Alan uh, had some good plan. So, um, so I wish him uh, the best to Alan. Alan, I will call you later again. And uh, let's keep in touch. And um, I cannot wait to announce uh, the next one for you when uh, all these things going to be finished. And I'm sure that uh, all your fans will know exactly uh, what we have in our head, because I have some few things also that I wanted to discuss, but now it's a little, little bit. Thank you, Alan. Okay, there we go. Mark Candy is on time. There we go. My country is on time. I'm sorry, guys. What's up, Ru? How are you? How are you doing, Mark? Thank you, thank you. How is everything? How is uh, the situation uh, in Sydney with uh, all these uh, COVID things, confinement? How's going uh, life over there? Do you hear me? It's pretty good. We just have a lockdown here. Same as you guys are there, but it's not that. Uh, it's not that. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much basically it. You, you 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 can go outside uh, easily uh, without having a, a police control or something like that, cops control. You hear me? Yeah. You can, can you can go outside, but yeah, but you can't go in groups, lots of groups, only two or three people, unless it's your family. Um, not hanging around. You know, uh, to get food and things, it's okay, but not big groups of people. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. To go. I remember when uh, I, I, I meet you for the first time, um, maybe you forget a little bit, but it was, I think, around uh, 2003, 2004. I was with Tarek Solak in K1. You were, you were fighting, uh, yeah, you were fighting a tournament, I think. And uh, that was the first time that I met you, but it was so quick. And then after that, we met again uh, at Pride when you were fighting uh, Nishijima, the Japanese boxer. Oh, wow, well, yeah, long time. How was I haven't seen Tarek or heard from Tarek in a long, long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he was, uh, he, he was sick. He was really sick uh, about Hilti. But what I heard right now, it's uh, he's going better, so uh, but he had some milk uh, problem, I think. Oh. Yeah, and um, so right, and then I saw you also when you were fighting over him because one of my clients he fought on the same night than you, then uh, where we we finally met again. So, are you opening right now uh, a gym? Oh, wow, I don't know. Yeah, I haven't seen Tarek in a long time. Oh, it's been ages. <laughs> yeah, 
I, I hope he's doing good because he had some health problem. But uh, but now I, what I heard from uh, some friends that everything is going good. But he changed his phone number, so uh, I cannot reach him. I hope to reach him again. Uh, and do you hear me? So are you all? So are you opening? I missed the Lord there. Yeah, yeah. Are you opening a, a gym right now in uh, in Sydney? Because we saw uh, we saw something on the pictures like uh, jungle knot, uh, martial arts, something like that. Yeah, we have um, three gyms. I just went with some partners with some friends of mine, and and uh, their brand is called Live Well. We have three gyms and a few other businesses we got going together. But yeah, that's about it. Is it already open? Well, two of them already open, but one of them we were supposed to open, but the, the COVID, the, the virus came and started making everything bad. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so. And how about your your book? Uh, your book, can you explain a little bit? So this book is more about uh, your biography, right? The what? The, your book, Born to Fight. The book that you, you made it. Can you explain a little bit more about this uh, this book? This is the book, uh, an autobiography about my life. Um, that's basically what it is. I think I think there's still uh, people can still buy in uh, in Amazon, huh? Yeah, you can you can purchase you can purchase it online. Um, Purchased it online, it's been out for a couple of years now. But yeah, you can still buy an um, uh, internet, uh, internet copy online. The hard copies, yeah. It's, it's been out for like two or three years now, so yeah. Yeah. And um, I have some questions for the in the past. What, uh, what is your, memor your memories at K1 time, Pride time, uh, in, uh, just about Japan? So uh, can you. That's something that uh, you are you are missing. Oh, I love fighting in Japan. Japan's a great country, you know. I mean, um, I had a lot of good memories there. Started my fighting career there, but um, yeah, pretty good. I like um, love working in Japan. Um, best good memories in Japan fighting. So. <clears throat> best memories. Uh, well, you know, just memories. You know, just fighting. It's it's all. Uh, been such a long career, but it's it's been like that. The career's been happening so fast, you know, it's crazy. So today you are no more fighting for the UFC, I guess. What's the next? Yeah, thank God for that. <laughs> I don't know. I was I was asking the questions. What's the next? Yeah, no, nothing. Just um, just business. Concentrate on business. I want to fight six more times in my career. Um, and that's it. I feel, I feel like I've got pushed out of the UFC. Um, you know, I just like working for the company. The, 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 the company is... Do, do you... Also some cats. Do you... If you want to make a comeback, uh, do you want also to go to the boxing? Because... As you as we know, you started with boxing also uh, in your career. You don't hear me? No. Wait. Let me call you back again. Wait. Then I will have wait. I'm sorry, guys. I'm trying to do the best things for you, but uh, these things happen like that. And uh, I'm really so sorry. Yeah, Mark Conti, you know, hear me. But um, again, uh, let me call you back, yeah. Um, 
I'm so sorry. I'm gonna WhatsApp him. I'm gonna tell him no problem. No problem. Once again. Ah, here there is. You hear me? Hey, hey. Yeah. I hear you, man. Yeah, I don't know. It's maybe some. I am in the Europe right now, so maybe it's uh, because of the connection. So I was seeing my last two questions. If you had to come back to the boxing, for example, you will accept a fight also because you you start your career with boxing. about a boxing fight uh, for some people now and um, but I want to fight six more times you know I have um, um, I want to finish my career but I have to pay for this lawsuit against the UFC so <laughs> yeah. I, got, I, I got to finish this uh, um, I want to finish my fight six times you know, and happy be happy with you so, so you're a free agent yeah I've been free I've been um, free for like two and a half years I've been just uh, doing business and stuff and just organizing this lawsuit against this company and that's basically it so yeah perfect i really i wish you the best uh, you know it we discussed something uh, around the april but uh, but uh, yeah you you were not ready for the march you remember we talked about that uh, for something a fight but uh, it was a little bit early and um, but anyway so uh, just a couple more questions so quickly. Your best fight memories? Um, probably, the, probably the fight I'm about to, I'm having right now with the UFC. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, probably the best, that's probably the best fight I'm having right now. So. <laughs> best moment in Pride? Uh, probably just competing in uh, Pride with a lot of the guys here. So, you know, um, great show Pride. A lot of uh, good fun memories in Japan, which is pretty good. Yeah, someone you hate, but in any sport. That's hard, it's a hard word to have, is hate. I mean, I don't hate anyone, I just, I mean, there's a lot of guys I have, uh, don't really get along with, or not, you know, because of what's, you know, because of the issues with fighting, but it's a hard, it's a hard, it's a hard word, hate. Someone you love. I just, I just, someone you love. Well, I love, a, I love a lot of people, I mean, I, <laughs> I love my kids. They're all of course, they're all of course, and God bless by the same, and God bless to them also, and also God bless to them to your children. I saw all the the pictures, videos. They are sleeping. The the last the the last one, the little one, is so cute. Yeah, Macy's birthday today. She's six. Your 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 son. He has in, in his DNA that like he wants to also be a fighter or something like that, or you don't really care about that? He don't really care. The kids these days just like gaming. He likes gaming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kids, kids, they, you know, kids, kids, they, you know I, if they want to do, they do whatever they want to do. I just, I want them, my kids to enjoy their life. They don't have to do anything they want to do, you know. It's hard to try and push them. I try to get them to play sport, but he likes playing rugby and rugby league, but not force them to do nothing, just have fun. What do you think about... Uh, be a kid. What did you say? I said, uh, he can be a kid as long as he can be a kid. Yeah, of course, and of course. Can, you know, leave the adult stuff to the adults. And, and, and I guess your, 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 their, their study is also most important, school and everything, growing well, all these things. That's also the most important part of the, of the children, of course. And you, as a father, you prefer to protect them. Yeah, look up, you know, support, uh, look after. But this, we're in some pretty crazy times at the moment, eh? Some pretty crazy times with what's, ha what's happening. Are you going uh, back again to uh, to where you came from, Mormon, uh, New Zealand, or you don't go anymore over there? No, I'm not really. I have my family still have a house over there, but this is my home. Australia is my home. You know, I, yeah. I love Australia. It's the best country in the world for me. I... I you know, I've got my family, my kids over here, so I mean, I'm originally from New Zealand, but uh, for me, by, by, by very far, I mean, like, by very far, Australia is the best country in the world, so I'm happy to be here. Agreed. Very lucky. And now, uh, 
So, uh, some more last things. Um, what do you do regarding the in this confinement? What do you do more? Are you watching some movies, series? What do you more? Um, What's your occupation? Training. Training. I spend a lot of time with the kids. Um, just business. A lot of business doing, trying to make nice. uh, uh, lots of gyms and lots of business. Um, then you know, I have um, on, on, on the other things I have. I haven't been to lawsuits against the UFC, <laughs> and you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's happened. Now these things, uh, it's really happened. But but I think this uh, story, it's not ended. It's not ended. So you still, you are you are still in court. I think, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They have um, it's, it's, it's long story. I just yeah. It's, 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 It's a long story, you know. You know, even even it's not the place to, to talk about this long story, but uh, but it's happening. The things uh, I just hoping that uh, you can maybe end a good arrangement or something like that because uh, these I things. Wanna, I, I mean, I've, I've fought many many years. I, I just I just didn't get a fair go. It just it wasn't fair. Um, especially dealing with the company, but you know, I mean, the, the lawyers will sort that out and go through court and you go from there. It's not, um, you know, I don't, I always wanted to go to court to, 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 do, to do my job and have it even and fair, but never was. Um, yeah. This is what this law is about, so yeah. What's your age right now? 46. <laughs> You're still good at 46, huh? Yeah, man. I mean, I, I still feel pretty young. I mean, I. Yeah. I just back into training and doing normal stuff, so you know, spending a lot of time with the kids, which is really good. Nice, How nice. What do you say? How are you? you I'm good, Mark. I'm good, Mark. I'm um, I'm uh, I'm managing uh, some fighters who are fighting in the UFC and uh, Bellator and all uh, all other promotion company. I don't have. Can uh, I ask you a question? What do you say? Can I ask you a question? Yes. Can I ask you a question? Of course. Yeah. Well, first I ask you. So, I my age is 43 years old. Oh, well, you're younger than me, dang. Yeah, okay. I'm younger than you. The number two question I have for you. you what you do can? you think about the Ali Act? The? Which? The Ali Act. The Ali Act. You know what? Um, so, I did not go too much into the details about the Ali Act. So, uh, what I know is that uh, three, three guys, three fighters, uh, ex-fighters, so they... They created that, but now it's been a while. It's been a while. There's five, there's five fighters, probably six now. Yeah, I'm that's what I heard also. But now it's been a while, and nothing really changed, and nothing really happened. So I don't know what they are waiting for, or I don't know what uh, it's the the things. But it could be good also, you know. In one hand, it could be very good. In the other hand, uh, yeah, I don't know, but. Yeah. The, the fighters, the fighters in, that you look after. Who are those fighters you look after? Um, in the in the Ali Akta, you mean? In the UFC, who do you look after in there? Um, so me, who I'm looking after. Um, so you mean a, a cl huh? Do you have many fighters you manage in the UFC? Uh, not too much. Not too much. Uh, I had uh, the last one that I, I had also. Uh, it was the heavyweight uh, Jerzinho. If you, I don't know if uh, you remember. It was the 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 one who fought uh, uh, who he fought Alovsky, and uh, he's the heavyweight, the new heavyweight who is not came out. Everybody, he fought against Overeem last time. You remember? Okay. Well, you remember the Suriname guy? You know So that that's a guy. That's a guy who uh, I giving him a, a, a contract to the rising. So he was nowhere, and he fought at the rising. He won the fight, and then after that, I switch him and I giving him the contract for the UFC. So he fought for me uh, three times, and uh, at the end, uh, he wanted to stop with me because uh, you know when you are in the United States, some other manager attract you. They ask you come to fight, come to work with me, and all these things. So he wanted to stop with me, so uh, we finished this. We finished the, the deal well, so all was good. But right now, Jerzinho is one of the heavyweight who can scare everybody because uh, he knocked him out. Yeah, he knocked him out everybody. I had also Mark Goldberg also in the UFC. 
Aí ela sou uma. About who? They're only sharing 4% of the revenue, the total revenue the UFC are making. Ah, I don't know. I don't know. You know, when when you know that UFC uh, was by was bought for four billions, so I mean. Uh, did, you know, did, you, did you did you know that uh, the, the the fighters that are not employees of the UFC? I heard also when uh, when um, when they were bought for uh, when Zufa sold the uh, the event, so many employees one didn't did no work over there. I think, yeah. But, but even when they were Zufa, they were just uh, they were subcontractors. They weren't employees. Ah, it's possible. It's possible. But uh, no, so that's what they are now. They're not employees of the company, but they have to wear the uniform and everything. So there's a lot of things that the U.S. needs to answer for. Yeah, but you and, and, uh, bring in the, tell me, tell me, tell me. Yeah, bringing in the Ali Act will change all that for these fighters. Yeah, you know, the, the, yeah, the that that that. Players, that the, the fighters, they all share forty percent of the revenue. Yeah. UFC fighters share four percent of the revenue. But you, you know, if if no, the Ali Act won the things. So that means that uh, UFC has to pay many uh, huge money. Uh, about this, but yeah, but no, it's still it's it's still in court, but it's still in court. Yes. But now we don't know if they are doing good job, Ali Act, or maybe they something it's well, that's wrong. They, that's because they're still in court. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I and I and I think for sure if the Ali Act comes in, you it'll change a lot of things for these fighters at least they'll get more money they'll become employees not fucking subcontractors they'll make good money instead of what they're doing right now that the UFC are still screwing these people over you know for my for my opinion uh, uh, Mark for my opinion uh, so I'm looking both hands you know so it it's okay so right now the first company who is the biggest and the best is the UFC in the MMA as uh, we can uh, see that. At the other hand, a lot of fighters wants to wants to earn more money because, yeah, you know, training is hard training. Everybody has a family. Everybody train hard. Uh, it's not boxing that you can only do it boxing and strength conditioning. But MMA, it's it's wrestling, it's BGG, it's uh, uh, strength conditioning, it's many many things. So you are full time. So. For me, of course, fighters need to earn more, of course, they need to earn more. When you see about boxing, what's happening uh, in boxing, all those guys, they are, uh, they, are, uh, they are having more money. Even a guy who, has, who is unknown fighters and is fighting a very famous fighter on maybe last minute, uh, he's paying well, huh? he's paying really well. But, yeah, you know, that's the things, but... Um, and today, and as you can see today also, everybody uh, are, are even ready to fight for less money if, uh, if they have to go to fight to a big company. You know, so... Um, yeah, that, that, that's, um, but the thing is, they, these fighters get into it thinking they'll get money and all, but they won't get nothing. I mean, the UFC don't pay uh, properly at all. No. You know, they're only paying a little amount of what they should be paying. Yeah, but um, but I, I suppose that you get some good, uh, uh, you get also some uh, some uh, some pay per view deal also. So uh, I mean, no, no, no. You, you only get you only get pay per view deal when you're the champion. Uh, but even then, the, I mean, you, you, when you see the champions like Stipe and the other champions asking for more money, you realize you go, "Wow, these guys aren't getting paid by the Yeah, and I because I, I was in the company, I was. One of the highest paid in the company, and they were just still crooked, and I never had the belt. Yeah, I, 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 you know, right now I never come to a situation that I have a fighter who is fighting for the belt, something like that. But um, but if one day these things happen, uh, uh, yeah, I will know more. I will. So I don't have this experience right now, but uh, I can understand you. Uh, so when I you mean, were, you can, it's easy to tell. The guys that get paid more in the other companies and the proper big companies get paid forty percent of the revenue. These guys only get paid four percent. Yeah. 
They're not employees. They're, they're, they're the subcontractors. And, yeah. and also, it's, what the funds are forgetting also, you are paying a lot of taxes also in France. So, yeah, so if you earn a, if you earn a dollar, you get 50 cents taken out, you get to pay for camp costs, you get to pay Plus the manager, a, exactly, exactly. So at the end, nothing, exactly. And at the end, nothing uh, stay. Yeah, this is uh, what it is. Uh, this is uh, maybe all these things can change it. Yeah, things will change when you bring the Audi Act. It totally changes things around. There's no way. I'm, all, I'm with these guys that are, that are part of this law, this uh, class action. And I think once this comes in, it changes the whole landscape of fighting. You know, um, the fighters get to pay, get paid more money, which is better. They become employees. And they start living properly. Properly, like as in, you know, why do you make it to the top of the world in fighting? So you can get paid well. Right now, these guys aren't getting paid well. You know, I mean, they're just getting ripped off. Yeah, yeah, true, 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 true. But it's true. But, but the thing is, uh, um, uh, you, I, I'm sure that you had a manager when you were uh, fighting for the UFC. So I guess your manager were, were, were talking about all these things uh, uh, regarding all these few details. No, I was I, I was talking to the other fighters. I was trying. I was, uh, that's how I got part of it. My manager looks after who was he. I have a few managers, but um, my other manager he, he he was also dealing with other guys. But like I said, um, I I met other guys that was were part of this lawsuit and, and talking about this. So. And as a fighter, like I said, they're not getting the proper amount of money. When you have to, uh, when you get to the top of the world, you should be getting paid good money instead of struggling to get more money. You should know, as a manager, organizing these guys' fights and how much money sure. they get. You know what they should be getting now, especially with MMA being the mainstream sport instead of boxing. Mm -hmm. Now, boxing is it's not as as used to, used to be, but they're still getting paid more than the than the MMA fighters. Yeah, yeah. You know some. And also, I think I think so. Also, if uh, when uh, you uh, when you are when you have already a name, uh, when you have already a name and you signing with the UFC, if you know, I'm not telling you about you, but it can be any other fighters. You know, maybe some of them, uh, some of them, they have a manager who don't have a lot of fighters. You know, that can play a lot of. Uh, they can play. A part of this uh, deal, or maybe you can you can sign in with a manager who has a, a lot of fighters, and uh, and then he can easily make a, a deal for you. You know, all these things can play uh, a small details game uh, about the game. So, you know, you, you know me, me for example, as a manager who I don't have a lot of fighters over there, and I don't have a champion. I have a girl who did who fought for the belt in Bellator, but in the UFC I never get uh, these things. Uh, so I'm I'm unfortunately uh, I can say that I don't have a lot of experience to say uh, for the UFC. So when I don't know the answer, so I cannot say uh, anything more. You know, so that's also the things. Yeah, I'm just speaking from experience. Yeah, sure, yeah, no. sure, 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 sure. Yeah, and so I understand how it's worked. I've been in the game for a long time and I've seen it. I know how they do it, and um, that's why we're in a couple of these lawsuits. It's, it's a sad thing to see these fighters coming through, like they're young fighters or thinking they can get some good money out of snap, but it just falls to the side like the rest of them. You know, even you get the champions asking for more money, you know there's something wrong. Yeah. When, a, when a guy like Stipe or, or another, you know, the other champions ask for more money, they're like, he's the champion of this company. Why is he asking for more money? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, everybody has a little bit different. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes we never understand also some few things like uh, why he is uh, because maybe he's selling a more uh, pay per view. Or maybe uh, sometimes you don't know exactly how they in which direction they goes for for each fighters. You know, so uh, yeah. so you are lost a little bit about that. Hey, he's a businessman. He's a businessman. You know, you, you know, everybody has a, his own uh, knowledge with him, uh, his own experience with him. But uh, 
you know, it, you know, I cannot say nothing more because you know when when we go to when we talk in the other hand, he did also a lot of things about the the UFC and everything. But now at the other hand, um, yeah, maybe some some couple fighters or or maybe more than uh, more than than each numbers fighters. Maybe they 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 um, how I can say they uh, they deserving something more the deserving maybe better maybe things and then it's not happened but uh, yeah unfortunately but they are, they are, that's difficult to talk about that a lot of the are just scared to talk about it a lot of the fighters are just scared to speak up about it I mean they're actually they're actually you know you're actually fighters and then not not not, not just in the octagon everywhere and to get guys like this to come around and to, to, to kiss ass these fucking guys like Dana White it's a joke he's just a joke he's an idiot yeah, yeah you, that's that's your experience with him. Uh, what do you think about all these Iceland things? Uh, the Iceland things. The you know he trying to uh, to to um, to keep the UFC two hundred forty nine. So, uh, but at the end uh, uh, they canceled the event because uh, ESPN asked it for. So uh, now he's trying to save a date for May nine. For May uh, nine, I think, or I don't, I don't remember, or, or eighteen. What do you think about all this situation? Ah, you did not follow that. Oh, I, I stopped following UFC a long time ago. Ah, yeah, I stopped yeah. following the fighters. I stopped fighting. I mean, I'm, I'm part of this lawsuit that I'm suing these guys, and I'm, I, I don't, I don't even interested. Why would I want to support a company like this, especially guys that are just stealing on people? They yeah. just, you know, this company says they got the best testing policies yet. They don't even enforce their laws. They're just criminals. Dana's a thief, and all he's talking is this bullshit to make these other people happy. <laughs> this is a joke. I don't support. Why should I want to support these guys when they say, "Oh, it's the best fighters in the world"? Bullshit. A lot of them are fucking cheaters. And that's who he supports. So the bottom line is, you can't say you've got the best organization in the world when you're when you're promoting cheaters and steroid users. And that's Dana White. No. You know me, me personally. Uh, that's, that's my experience. Yeah, that's that's your fight experience. Me personally, uh, uh, I don't have nothing with him uh, because, uh, first of all, it's not a big friend. It's not a friend, but uh, I respect what he did, and um, and I'm still working also with the UFC and all this thing. But I can also understand you. Uh, that's your 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 story. You don't understand. You, you, you're, you're looking at the fighters that work for that company, and they're getting screwed. No. And, and, and that's how they work. You might not think that they're getting screwed, but they're not getting a good deal. I know that. And I, sp I don't speak there from, from, I speak there from when I was in there. It's experience. I know what it's like being in there. I don't know what these guys are doing. They're just, they're just screwing everyone and making lots and lots of money. Um, but today, today you achieved a lot of things uh, yourself, Mark, and uh, you have a big names. You achieve a lot of many things. You I fought many people and you don't have to prove nothing right now. You did many things. Yeah, I know. It's, been a, it's, it's been a long time since I've been fighting. I mean, I, I, when I was working for the company, I was really bitter. It was a lot of... Uh, I got sour five years you know, before I finished my career working for that company. And, um, you know, I just got turned off fighting. I just... It was just... It just felt ugly working for that company because, you know, you, you weren't getting a fair deal at all. <laughs> so, I mean, fights that should have been won easily were just let go. It was like, yeah, this... this this company doesn't deserve any more blood, so I stopped supporting, uh, stopped watching them and, and uh, supporting these fighters um, a long time ago. So yeah, that's I just don't think it's a, that's like what I, I what it's a, it's that's a waste of time. that's like I wanted to say it's you you have no you have your name you you achieved a lot of things uh, you made many things you don't have to prove nothing now uh, what's happening. I was just trying to make it an even fight playing it to it. But, you know, when you see these guys working in that company now, all the fighters look at that, you just, you just feel sad because you know they're getting cheated. They're not getting paid well. And you just think, you just, oh, oh, wow, they're getting fucked up for nothing. You know, what they think is good money is not. But, but, to be honest. but you had also some good memories with Dana White and with the UFC, I think. Uh, it's just as from yeah. the... It's just as from the... <laughs> The Brock Lesnar fight, I think you were uh, upset and all these things happened. Well, not really, you know. It was a build-up. There was, there was like a lot of cheaters in a row to get to that point, you know. Um, 
Brock Lesnar was the, the straw on the camel's back there broke and I was like, you know, I'm sick of fighting these guys because the guys that just get caught with cheating, nothing happens to them. The, you know, the, the UFC say they have the best testing policy in the world, but why, where, where, where are they going to enforce that policy? No. There's no, you know, oh, he has to go through the procedure. Okay, how many guys have to go through the procedure and what happens to them? Nothing. <laughs> oh, he, he got a year fine, he got a, he got fined this. That dickhead Brock Lesnar hasn't even paid his fine for, of, of, of two or three years ago. Um. You know, it, it's ridiculous. They, they, at least the other companies that you work for, they, they don't come out saying they have the best testing policy in the world. These dickheads do. They say we have the best testing policy. We, 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 we go off the format of, of um, WADA, um, the World Anti-Doping Engine, but still, do they, do, they, do they enforce this shit? No, they don't. So it's, it's, uh, I got a bit uh, um, depressed and um, bitter, you know, um, five years out before I did my contract with this company. Um, and like I said, seeing these fighters go through now, it just makes me laugh. I don't even watch a lot of them because I, I just feel how sad it is for them to get um, cheated. That's um, how you feel. You just feel you get cheated. I mean, I understand that the company should make the amount of money they make, but um, are they actually giving a fair amount of money to these fighters that are, are dropping their blood in that? No, they're not even the four percent. Is that the, that's what they're sharing? You know, good iron players share forty percent of the revenue. The UFC fighters, I think, share forty four percent. I remember. I re something. Something. It came in my mind. Uh, I remember something. One day you were seeing somewhere, uh, I don't know where it was, uh, you were talking maybe with a journalist or someone, you were saying that uh, sometimes you, you lost, you forget what you did, what you're saying, and, and then after that immediately, uh, I think Dana White or someone else uh, say something like, you're not going to fight, something like that. What's happening exactly at that time? Well, you know, it I was a joke they from they you they or, they or it was they true? Did, they did, they did. They say to me that I had CTE or something, but as you can see, I'm pretty, nothing wrong with my memory. And if I, if I don't want to remember something like anyone else, I just don't want to remember it. But, but, but what I don't like it with their company is a lot of things, you know, they forced me to fight um, one of my fights. They forced me to fight Alistair over him. I didn't want to fight him because he, well, before that, they wanted me to fight a guy named Josh Barnett. And I said, I don't want to fight that guy. He's a, he's a cheater. And they said, you have to fight that guy. I said, I don't want to fight him. I said, I'll fight this guy if you put an, um, a clause in my contract. Uh, this is for Josh Barnett. If you put a clause in my contract, that if, if he gets caught cheating, take all his money off him. Don't give it to me, just take it off him. And they said no. And then two days later, Josh Barnett popped. And then afterwards, they, they said to me, you have to fight Alistair Abram. I said, no. I, I, went, I did the same process as I asked him before. I said, oh, can you put this clause in? And um, they said no. Then they sent me a letter saying, if you don't do this fight, you're going to get fired. <laughs> you know, I remember that decade then, I said to people, well, we never forced anyone to fight. You just, you just, what did you just do to me? You just forced me to fight a guy. And I said, clearly, I didn't want to fight because he's a cheater. But if, you, if I do fight, put this clause in. I mean, that, that's, that goes to show how, how, uh, how and then, and then the, the person that pulls me from this fight card was their lawyer. So in my contract, it says only a doctor can you pull you from a fight. How is their lawyer a doctor? <laughs> it's, it's a, it was a freaking joke. The end of my career it was a joke. And I just got so depressing working for them. So with Overeem was your last fight on the contract? What's that? With Overeem was your last fight on the contract? No, no, it was... Um, um, I know, Derek Lewis. You fought Derek Lewis. forced me to fight. You know where Dana says he doesn't force people to fight. Well he forced me to fight that fight and I said I didn't want to unless they put the clause in. But as soon as I took the fight I dropped the lawsuit and that's how that started. I mean you, you, you can't force people to fight if they don't want to. And if these guys are cheating then why would you want to put these keep giving you these guys that are cheating? Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a joke. It's just not fair. So that's what soured and bitted my relationship, uh, my career, and you know, working for that company. I, and I'm really glad I went out of there, not working for them anymore. I mean, it's just a joke. I don't, like I said, when you asked me if I support them, I, I couldn't give a fuck at the champions these days. Or I just feel sad for these fighters that are, that, that are getting screwed and ripped off. Uh, I mean, you as a manager should understand this. You're looking at these guys going in to fight for their families, for themselves, and you know they're getting paid little money. Something's going to change. And it's hard, and it's hard, huh? this sport is very hard, huh? 
it's, it's, a, it's a sport where something can you damage your brain you walk or anything again they could actually die you know that uh, exactly you damage your, your brain your yeah of course i uh you I know, can imagine. And, and you know, you know, as a manager that looks after these people that spends time with their families, that something's got to be done about these guys. It's got to be at least if they're giving them their blood and everything else with, they've got to give, be getting rewarded well. If, if they make it to the top, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the idea of fighting, fighting. You know, some of the best fighters came from poverty, and that's what these fighters want to be: is the best fighters making money. But the only money is being made and getting shared around these days is the guys that own this company, <laughs> and they're the crooks. So, so I think now if if you're doing a second book, that's gonna be a, a second edition <laughs> with well, with know, more story. I, I, I only wrote that book just to help others with their journey of life. You know, it wasn't about my career just got sound because of steroids at the end of it. You know, I've got no issues. I don't hate anybody. I just working uh, for me. Fighting was just what I felt God put my life to save me. You know, from being uh, someone that went back to jail all the time, you know. But uh, you know, when you say you hate someone, you but you you were young, huh, at that time, huh? Huh? When you go to the jail, it was when you were bouncer. You were young, huh, at that time. Yeah, I was young. Yeah, I went twice, but yeah, um, I mean, it, it's just you know, like you said to me, if I hate someone, yeah, that's just the way. It's, yeah, with my CT, I don't have CT. I mean, who wants to remember some bad days they've had? If you remember me, you don't have CTE. Well, <laughs> well hey man, if I ask you something about something you did a couple of days, he goes, oh, no, I don't remember. That's rubbish. What did you yesterday? Who cares? To be honest, you know, I mean, but so long as I know what's right and wrong, that's the main thing. Yeah, yeah true, 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 true. But, yeah, uh, yeah this is what it is. Huh? This is you know, I... Uh, no, no, yeah, maybe it's tough now, right now, because you're still in the court with them. But um, after that, I hope that's gonna be finished well, and um, yeah, I, I to, and I, you're I, gonna I, be focused I, for the next page. Yeah, when I finished my career with the UFC, I said I'll fight six more times, and then I will um, end my career. I'll make some money in my career and be happy. So you know, it's been a couple of years now. I've just got to, finally got the the edge for fighting back, the love for fighting back again, training. I mean, I never like training anyway, but, um, you know, um, finish my career, I'd be happy. I think I'll be 47 and a half, I think, <laughs> and then no more fighting. And then just would, you, would you be back to, would you, would you like to, uh, to go back to Japan? Yeah, I love Japan. I mean, I always thought I was a Japanese in a different life. <laughs> but yeah, um, you know, I've got uh, two boxing fights, I think I do, and then I'll do, I'll hopefully try and get back to Japan and finish four fights of uh, MMA. I still love MMA, man, it's one of my favorite sports, I just, I always want to be the champion of MMA, but uh, just never quite got there. <laughs> let, 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 let's talk also a little bit about boxing. So you have some good fighters in New Zealand, Australia, you are following some of them, because you go to London also? Family friend, uh, Joseph Parker, you know, he's a, one of the top fighters in the world. He's a great fighter. Um, we have, you know, a lot of great fighters on this side. You know, Ray Seffel, David Tour. I mean, oh, Ray uh, Seffel is a really fighter. nice guy. Hemi. Yeah, there's so many great fighters on this side of the world. I like so much uh, Ray Seffel. Very classy guy. You know, Jason, um, Jason Vermore. I mean, there were so many fighters from this side of the world. I mean, we got Seth Brecker. Right, there's so many. There's so many. Yeah, particularly, I, I like your Parker. Junior. Oh, on kickboxing, uh, Junior Tafa. Uh, there are two brothers, huh? I think. Yeah, Junior and Justin. I mean, you got Lucas Brown, you got. Uh, there's heaps of fighters from the side of it. There's so many. Yeah, uh, and particularly, <laughs> I, I. You got Izzy, you got Robbie Whitaker, you got, you know, the Vulcan Oz. There's so many great fighters. Yeah, 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 yeah. A lot, huh? Right now, you have some good fighters, you know. And especially, I like to follow uh, uh, Parker. Uh, he's. Uh, He's a, he's very yeah, yeah. someone that I really follow him. Uh, he's uh, yeah, I'm looking great. forward to his next fight. I'm really looking forward to his next yeah. fight. I was watching. Uh, he was talking with Eddie Hearn, and uh, he was uh, the, he was talking about uh, what can be uh, his next plan and all these things. So it was nice to to hear that because uh, yeah yeah as a, he's a good one. Huh? All those guys from New Zealand they are so tough. Huh? They are so tough. It's unbelievable. Yeah, Junior Fire and 
and Joseph fighting like, whoa, this is going to be a great fight. Yeah, yeah. also. I think they're full damages, but yeah, the, the, the professional fight, I think it'll be like the biggest one from the side of the road. So, um, some, some big guns there, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be great. Yeah. But um, Mark... times for boxing. Mm -hmm. MMA. What, yeah. what did you say? I said it's exciting times for the fight game. There's a lot of new blood coming through. From the and especially the last uh, couple of years, we have some good gift uh, from uh, boxing. Yeah. yeah. We have amazing, some good. amazing fighters coming through MMA, boxing. It's just it's good times for fighting. Outside of uh, Australia, New Zealand, who's the fighter that uh, you like? You like to see him? Uh, there's, there's a lot of there's a lot of fighters coming through. I mean. For boxing, you've got um, Hemi, you've got uh, Junior Fard, uh, um, Joseph, you've got Lucas Brown. You got, there's, there's a lot of good fighters that are boxing from the side of the world. Are you still watching more boxing right now? Uh, well, you know, I, I just... I just I've, I've, oh, you're watching a little bit uh, different, uh, more, different uh, sports. People I know, I, 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 so I watch um, do the business, you know, I mean... Not everyone, but I... You know, and today it's difficult to watch everything, uh, everybody and uh, all fights. Yeah, but if, you, if you're interested in somebody, if you like watching this... Exactly. Movie, you know, I just... I, 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 I turn on the TV, you know, it's, I haven't paid for uh, uh, UFC in, uh, since I finished my career. I mean, I went to watch Thai fight, and then I watched the... I just watched the shorts of a certain few fighters like Justin and that. And that's, that's basically it. Now, let me ask you... Uh, Huh? Tell me. I saw, um, yeah, yeah, that's pretty much basically it. Let me ask you a um, um, uh, last question, and I don't want to take your time, because it's very late where you're living. Give me some thoughts about Gokan Saki, and um, also, you, the, he asked you to fight, uh, if I remember, it was in Japan. So, uh, can you explain me a little bit about uh, all these things? Well, this guy is a talented fighter. I've seen him fight uh, a few people, man. He's very technically sound, eh? Amazing fighter. Um, he asked me to fight in the UFC. I was like, yeah, why not, man? I'm always, I'm always willing to do something. I think he's a fair man. Like, uh, I don't think he cheats. But, um, yeah, I was always, I said yes to, I mean, I don't say no to any fighters unless I feel they are on some super source. And, um... That's when it becomes, you know, like, just as of late, it's been hard to try to say yes to any fighters, especially the guys that are cheating. But um, I think Gherkin's a great, uh, great fighter and, uh, you know, a great striker. But when, when, you, when you're talking about cheating, in Japan, everybody were cheating. Yeah, but you can, you, you can, you can say that, but... You say I, I know, you I know, but I, I saw also a lot of in the backstage... Do you think the athletic no. athletic never the commission uh, doing good job? What sir? What do you think about the Nevada Athletic Commission? They are doing good job. The Nevada. The yeah. Team. I don't know, man. I, I, I get to, I, sometimes I get a bit sus about these commissions and these these people like Usada and that, but they're actually telling the truth or not. I mean, a lot of their their, their results come out after the fights are done. They've done it many, many times. I mean, you've got Jeff Nowinski, a guy who was working there called Lance Armstrong, that works for the USAR, I think he was in the UFC now, but that incident with John Jones when he got caught for picogram on a system, so they moved it from one state to another state, but, I mean, just having a picogram in a system, why should he be allowed, being allowed to fight? Yeah. He's still breaking the law. Yeah. Even if he had a picogram or a freaking whatever it was, he shouldn't have been allowed to compete. Because that's still breaking the laws. And even and then if the guy said, well, that's from the last time we caught him, it didn't matter. He still had something in him. So guys like that, company like Usada, you, you, you wonder why. Is it, is it actually, are they actually pulling the right, doing the right thing? Yeah. But maybe, maybe all those fighters 
who maybe they have some problem in their life, in their private life maybe, and that's something that they cannot, uh, they cannot skip. I'm, I'm also against cheating. But definitely, I'm like you, I'm against the cheaters uh, because uh, the sports is not about cheating. But uh, yeah, you, you know, in any sport we can see that uh, even on soccer and even on on bike and all these things, uh, everybody's cheating. Uh, also, look, Armstrong. That, that, that doesn't mean that doesn't mean we should allow them. To, no, we should just we should still we should be like the Olympics and say, you know what, we're gonna take your money, take your name, get rid of you. Yeah. Because what they're doing is, is wrong. I mean, there's no excuses for for you to go inject yourself with drugs to make yourself hurt someone more because this is not fair. I mean, I mean, you can give me any excuse in the world and it won't matter. No. Because the guy shouldn't be doing it. Yeah. For me, I look at it like um, it's an average fighter. And when they take steroids, it makes him above average. So he's hanging around with guys like me that are above average. But if you take away his steroids, he becomes average again. No. You know, if I took steroids like no. these guys, do you think I'll be above average? These guys would have stand a chance. But definitely, um, I agree with you. Uh, I'm also against the cheaters. But um, I mean, I think all of us should, should make a stand towards it and say these guys. I mean, for anything. I mean, there's no excuses for 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 what the USADA and all these guys have done. I mean, I mean that on on that, on that note, they didn't do a good job. When guys like Jim Davinsky said, "Oh, this guy was he has a picogram," and we could and from the last time it was in a system. How do you know it was from the last time? I mean. <laughs> He yeah. still had a little bit in the system. Why? Why did you guys let him compete? No. Well, we don't know why. It's just like when you see a person like Brock Lesnar or somebody says he's on the juice. You can't go to the to the, the court of law and say to them, oh, "I I know he's on the juice." Where's your proof? Yeah. You have no proof. You yeah. have to go and get it out of his blood and say, "Okay, now I know." People say to me all the time, Mark, I mean, couldn't you tell? And I said, well, I said, okay, so if I look at someone, I always try to give him the benefit of the doubt. Say, oh, he's, he's clean. But, you know, looking at someone, you can say, oh, I think he's a cheater, but what are you going to do with that? Of course, I thought he was dirty, but, uh, and I said he was dirty, but, you know, I thought it, I had my suspicions about it. But, you know, Dana did say to the brother, they go, oh, we're testing him, this and that, blah, blah. But they weren't. <laughs> they weren't. <laughs> Uh, Sorry. Mark, it was so nice to talk with you. It was so so great. I didn't listen. You know, I'm a, as a manager. I didn't want to. The, the bad stuff. I think. I think it, we need to talk about the stuff to, to make exactly. it better. Exactly. Else. Exactly. You know, we need to talk exactly. about the bad stuff so we can make things better for everyone else. This is amazing. This is what the uh, evolution is about. You know, you, you're right. You, you are right. Sometimes it's good to talk. You know, uh, sometimes it's open eyes to everybody, to everyone. It's, it's, it's something that has to be talked about, especially when we're talking about the sport. You look after guys. I was formerly in the sport, and it's something that that's still that needs to be fixed. Yeah, yeah. We all know that. No, no, true, true. You know, to, 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 tomorrow I can be on the same situation, and uh, it is all part of the job to trying to make better to the for the fighters. If I cannot, then if I cannot, I will tell, change the manager. I cannot go uh, up the line, but uh, of course, there's it's a lot of things that um, you know. There's a lot of good, uh, things that happen, but I mean, uh, I mean, things happen to you. You've got to be the person to say, you know, you've got to go and do something. I mean, you just can't sit there and let 
the bad things happen because, I mean, it'd be your fault. No. Still sitting there saying, nah, nah, I took a blind eye to that, I took a blind eye. You know? No, true, true. No, you're, you, you are right, you know, and it's good to, to share some experience like that to listening because that's the, that's the part of so the game and uh, we're learning all the time. Uh, and we're learning always, even we have, if we have a 46, C50, we always learn. But, uh, of course, it's always good to share that. And, uh, and um, yeah, but, um, of course, it's our job. You know, many managers, sometimes they don't really look like that. They, they, they show you like uh, they want to protect you, but they are only thinking about the money. Money, of course, is, of course, is. everybody, every, no. Of course, everybody is looking about the money, but sometimes you need to have a little bit of respect. You, you know my first contract I had with K1? You know Dixon McGovern? Those guys ripped me off. My first contract I had, those guys ripped me off. Which one? Who? Dixon McGovern. Ah, yeah, yeah. Remember my first contract with K1? My first contract, those guys shooting me. That's, that's how I knew. Yeah, but Tarek, like, Tarek, ta, 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 Tarek, Tarek, he was a, a wolf, huh? It's yeah, and, 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 and in the Japan time, it was different also. More things, more details. I don't want to go to the into details. But, um, but, yeah, but, but this is, the thing about that is, Goku, the, the Japanese and any other company, they don't say that they're the best drug testing company in the world. No. They don't go and say, I've got the best testing um, procedures, policies, everything. They just said to me, do you want to fight? Yeah. Whereas other companies say to me, uh, well, the company like UFC saying, oh, I've got the best testing policy, I've got this and that, but do they look after you or enforce it? No. <laughs> so why even have them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah. yeah, true, true, you're right. But uh, as I was saying, uh, many, f you know, I, I want to finish with this. It's, um, we know it, the, the, the mo everybody's working for the money, and of course, everybody likes the money. But in my case, in my case, uh, I, will, I will always looking to have some money. But but the the fighters is also important. Try to having good communication, do good talk. It's maybe much more better to be uh, more close with your fighters and, and being together, strong against uh, all everybody. But but sometimes some manager don't have uh, enough power, and uh, and uh, fighters can uh, can let him down in the middle of the way. Sometimes um, you can be a manager who you have a lot of fighters and you have a more powerful. And even if you are not a good dealer, a good uh, if even you are a bad guy, but you are a manager, but uh, you have a little bit power about that. But yeah, uh, all many details uh, take uh, in consideration. So, uh, but um, yeah. So in my opinion, it's like that. But um, now. Uh, now we will see how uh, I'm going step by step myself. I'm going step by step. I'm trying. Uh, I have some good. Uh, I have also some good Australian guy uh, in my uh, under contract. Who there are uh, seven zero eight zero. They are good. They are maybe good enough to go to the UFC. Just maybe one two more fights. They are young, and we will see their future. You know, tomorrow if uh, because at the end of the day. That's the fighter who's uh, doing the job also uh, because he's fighting. He's fighting. If he's winning, I mean, the fighters can have it. If he's winning more fights, yeah. But if the fighter is, if the fighter is winning more fights and he's still always with his manager, they can be together. They can growing together. They can be better together. But if tomorrow, yes, that's, that's the idea. But uh, yeah, but. That's the idea. I mean, the fighters only, only job is just to win fights. The management's job is to look after their, their path and everything, how it's all. But I mean, right now, it's hard to, to push anything with the UFC because they know how it works. They know the monopoly. They know what figures they're giving, and they can't. They only can give a certain amount of money. Yeah. Because they just they want to keep everyone low low money. That's what they do. Yeah. But you know. Sorry to say, but that's just the truth. Yeah, no, true, 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 true. But uh, as I said, uh, but you can say things different. But you know, that's why we're in these lawsuits against these guys, and they have 
plenty of money to sort this out. They want to keep it the way it is, where the guys that own the company just buy bigger helicopters and yachts and shit like this, while everyone else is dropping their blood. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have other questions for me? No, I just I think um, I think you should educate a lot of your fighters about um, exactly. Um, what's actually happening with the UFC, what they're actually getting paid, the, the, the monopoly that they've got, what they're getting paid, um, the percentage of, of the, the total revenue. Um, you know, and dickheads like they never will tell you all sorts of bullshit, but at the end of the day, they're still, the fighters you have aren't employees, they're just um, subcontractors. And, um, you know, I think some fighters on the low end would have got more money from sponsorships yeah. than from the actual fight picks. But yeah, that's also important. Money. Sometimes some fighters sometimes yeah, so need to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, these things also some some fighters need some <clears throat> some budget for the camp, All these things because there is some a lot of fighters who don't have nothing to to start, uh, and they are very good talented fighters. Uh, and just because yeah, of uh, no. There needs to be a union form. There needs to be a lot of things to happen with that, so the fighters can have a, have a say. Because I mean. So if, I, if I was, if I knew a lot of the fighters or if I, it could be things like I said, man, all of you just say you're not going to fight. Yeah, yeah. company's screwed. Where, where are they going to get their fighters from? Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the end yeah. of the day, you don't need 51% of the fighters to say we're not going to fight unless we get, we get unless we get the Ali Act to become employees, blah, blah, this and that. And that's what's going to happen to the company. They're going to go out of this. <laughs> They're not going to get nowhere. They will see their power go from here to fucking zero. Yeah, yeah. That's what's going to happen. But the problem is, all these fighters don't want to burst some nuts and go together and start a union, and that's the problem. I mean, that's the only problem with these days. So they'll get paid what they're getting paid for the rest until something changes. And the only thing that it can change for them is these things like these lawsuits. Yeah. Because they ain't gonna ain't gonna get jack shit from here. I mean, uh, I just that's all I can see is that the road staying the way it is. Nothing's gonna change. Yeah. We'll see, huh? we will see. We're gonna see how things play out, and then, uh, and then we will see the future. Mark, I'm not gonna take your time. It was so no, nice to talk with you, you again. I'm, I'm always, I'm always happy to invite people about the great, good old UFC. <laughs> but I'll keep doing it too, as long as I can. Too. Don't worry, but let's keep in touch. Huh? let's keep in touch. Yeah. Uh, I will call you back again. Let's keep in touch. I have also an ID. Don't worry. Don't worry. I, we, we, we spoke already uh, before, uh, months ago. We're going to talk again by phone. Uh, I have uh, some things to talk with you. So let's keep in touch. Thanks again for everything. God bless you to you, to your family. And thanks for everything. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, I'm not a journalist, but I just wanted to talk with him, share with him. Many things uh, uh, came into, to, into the, the conversation. Better wishing him uh, good luck, because uh, Mark Hunt, it's, uh, it's really uh, one of the fighters that uh, I really love it, and I always watching him back in the days. I was a huge fan of him. So, um, anyway. Well, so, um, thank you for everybody. Let me see if uh, Martin is gonna take the phone. Yo, Luca. Hey, man. Man. How are you doing? Good, alles goed? Ja, alles goed. <laughs> Met jou ook? Ja, heel goed, bedankt. En het is been a while. Ja, het is been a long time. time. I love the interview with Mark Hunt, by the way. Oh, I remember yeah. it from back in the days. In, uh... 10 minutes. I wanted to discuss 10 minutes. I didn't want to play the journalist. One hour. I'm not journalist, and he goes, uh, he talks a lot about his, uh, his yeah, things. Yeah, right? But yeah. this is his story. Yeah. But at the end of the day, uh, that's the guy that I really like. I really yeah, love. Okay. How are you? How's good? Well, thank you. 
I tried to reach you, but I guess you were maybe busy. No, I didn't know how to connect, but now I found out. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah. Me too. You know, sometimes I'm I'm afraid that to lose everybody on the on the same time, and then at the end I'm gonna say, oh shit, yeah. why I started this? Uh, yeah, how yeah, is nice the company? Time. How's everything? In, uh, are you in Holland right now? In Jakarta? I'm in Holland right now. Yes. How is the confinement right now in Holland? The what? The sorry? The quarantine. Corona. Yeah, yeah. How is everything? It, Everybody it's not too bad, honestly. I mean, like, I think uh, um, Belgium has a hard time. You're in Belgium now? Yeah, I'm in Brussels right yeah. now. And I'm happy that I'm here, uh, that I was not somewhere else. Okay. Yeah, because um, here it's pretty much okay. I mean, like, uh, all public uh, places are closed. But then on the other hand, you can go out, you can do running, you can walk outside, uh, as long as there's a uh, one and a half meter distance. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's not too bad, honestly. Yeah, of course, it's not nice, especially the, the gyms and the, the, the bars and the clubs, they are really suffering. Yeah, yeah and, exactly. Uh, All yeah. the sickness. Yeah. But we are, but we are uh, myself and I think Holland also, we are still happy because uh, if we were in France or we were... Uh, in somewhere in Spain or, or Italy, uh, it would not Horrible. be the same. Yeah. So we still can be happy about uh, yeah. about here. But I think I think this this thing is gonna gonna end uh, soon. I think uh, okay, maybe we're not gonna go to the summer uh, vacation somewhere, but uh, yeah. but it's gonna end. I think uh, they can they cannot continue like that. Uh, only yeah, the hopefully. owner, the big owner in, in this world knows. Uh, where is it gonna end everything? Yeah, yeah. Are you so right now? You're more businessman. Huh? Yeah, uh, I'm. I'm still doing a little. Uh, when uh, when this uh, Corona thing is over, before that I was still teaching every day, but uh, I'm not so much focused on on fighters anymore. I have one guy still in the UFC, I have one girl in the, in Bellator, but um, now mostly I'm I'm focusing on uh, on Fitar, uh, the smart mirror I have. I saw it. Uh, that's something very interesting because I never seen this uh, before, yeah. and uh, I just saw it with you. And uh, but this is something for someone that he can buy individually, or yeah. or so we for a gym also. Yeah, yeah. In the beginning, we were focusing on gyms, on uh, corporates, and on hotels. But the first two are closed, and the third is uh, suffering now. So uh, we decided to move to uh, the home fitness market, so people at home uh, they can they can they can get one too. But that's a smaller and leaner uh, model, also uh, a lot cheaper. So uh, yeah, everybody can then stay at home because I believe that home fitness is going to be the next thing. You know, everybody even after this is finished, people are going to be scared to be in a big gym with a lot of people. So we believe that home fitness is going up. And that's why we're, uh, we're, we, uh, we were producing that, uh, that, that smart mirror. Um, and there you can do a lot of exercise. So, so this, is, uh, uh, this is something not bigger than, uh, than one, yeah, like, something like yeah, that? Like a regular mirror at home. Yeah, I would say the one for consumers is probably going to be 120 by 50. Okay. So, so, so you can, uh, as I can see, so you can make some shadow yeah. exercise, pass workout, yeah. all things, and yeah. uh, and also all the for the reflection, you know, yeah. Uh, flex. Yeah, yeah. So, so most of the mirrors out there now, they're just mirrors with video content broadcasted. So what you have, you will have like your mirror, and there's a big TV screen behind it, and the broadcasting uh, video content of fitness exercise, for example, and then you can join, right? Um, what they also have is like a kind of a Skype or like like this kind of application where you can do like personal training with a trainer from a distance, you know? Oh, that's very interesting. Yeah, so that's what we're going to incorporate as well. And that's what we have in our mirror as well. But we also have more interactive games. We call it extra gaming. So fitness is sometimes a little bit boring, but you want to have like this interaction. And we have a shadow boxing game where uh, the first uh, module is... Uh, we're going to teach you how to punch correctly. Mm -hmm. Then you will have a boxing bag uh, in the mirror. And then it says, okay, you have to hit here, you have to hit there. And With then the mirror left hook, uppercut, left hook, for example. And then we also have a pet trainer. 
And now we're working on a game that you also can fight each other. So you can find fight a, a person in the mirror itself. And you can also, we can also fight each other. So that's what we're developing right now. But for now, we already have a lot of stuff there. And so like that, including the this, reaction games. With this, you were also uh, at FIBO. Uh, yes. You, you yeah. were presenting this everywhere. Huh? Yes. You were in Germany in FIBO, at FIBO and some other place. Yeah. So, so this thing, some, so if someone wants now, he can already buy this or it's yeah. still, uh, you're still doing the marketing and all these things before and selling? How yeah. uh, goes this? We, ha we already have uh, some, uh, quite a few deals for, uh, for fitness gyms and hotels and, uh, and, uh, and also uh, corporates. So for example, maybe you know in Paris, there's a big uh, hotel called The Rich. Uh, Le Ritz Paris, and yeah. uh, there's one there. Yeah, so we have one in the spa over there. Um, we have Fitness Park. Uh, there's a mirror there. We have uh, Giga Fit in France. They will have one. Uh, Magic Form. We're talking to some big, big companies there. Uh, in Holland, we also have uh, Train More. We have uh, Van der Falk Hotels. It's like a nice. big thing. So yeah, and and some corporate. We have excellent. Uh, ICT company, like uh, so. We're in the beginning, we're focusing more on B2B, and now next week, we'll get the sample of the B2C uh, model for consumers at home, and then we'll probably be able to start delivering end of June, I believe, on a scale. Yeah, but that's a very good idea because uh, now, uh, you know, a lot of trainers, coaches were giving uh, private class. Yeah group classes and all these things. And, and when, for example, these things, it's happened with the COVID, uh, everybody was like, oh, shit. Uh, yeah. No, I can't do now. Yeah. more. Some of them, uh, some of them uh, choose the online training, but yeah, is it works, but not for a lot of people, minimum yeah. people, uh, they can do it. But uh, even no one were, was ready about that. But, uh, but your thing is, it's something nice because it can be ready for everybody. Yeah. And even, uh, even uh, as you say, they can make also an online thing. So uh, yeah. uh, I think that's very interesting thing for the future. Yeah, we have fitness workouts. We have uh, uh, live trainings, like personal trainings through the, through the mirror. We will have, uh, we have shadow boxing. We have reaction games. Like you see this a lot, right? When you have to touch those lights and stuff. That's yeah. what we have in the mirror, uh, multiple... Uh, um, games, different games for, for these uh, reaction games. We will, we also have like, a, we call it the survival game, where you're in a digital environment and you have to jump over stuff and do a squat underneath. And then you have to, I don't know, do a, a lunge sidestep, for example, and then you have to punch some stuff. So it's a really nice exercise, you know, it makes it. I would like to, to try uh, if yeah. I can uh, one day in Amsterdam. You're living in Amsterdam, right? What's that? You're living in Amsterdam? No, I'm living in Deventer, which is one hour from oh, Deventer, yeah, Deventer. Oh, you know? I forget it. Yeah, Sometimes yeah. I will come to, to try this. Uh, yeah, so sure. We can share a nice table also at the same time. Yeah, and you're I'm, always welcome. Thank you very much. And also, I um, uh, I saw so that you're going a lot to Jakarta. You yeah. you also have some gyms. You're, yeah. you're trying to open the market in Jakarta. There is a market, I think, over there. Yeah, but, uh, so now it's going to be difficult as well. I just sold my gym there. I had a gym in Jakarta myself, a uh, really nice gym, and uh, we had some good fighters there. Uh, but now I closed the gym because I want to focus on FitArt, this, uh, this interactive mirror, smart mirror in Holland. And, uh, but I'm still going there once in a while to give courses. I'm working together with Celebrity Fitness and Fitness First Asia, this huge company. Um, if celebrity fitness, I believe, has around 80 gyms now, and, and celebrity fitness even more. I think around, uh, sorry, the fitness first even more. I think in total they would have more than 150 gyms, uh, and they will. I think they're having close to 350,000 members of 450,000. It's crazy, it's nuts. And um, I'm 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 giving courses there to the personal trainers how to become. Uh, kickboxing trainer or mixed martial arts trainer or self-defense just like the basics what exactly. you need in a fitness gym not to become like a world champion but just the basics uh, people want to do a workout with you and then you know how to do the pads you know how to hold the pads uh, 
how to make a proper punch, how to make a proper kick or knee. That's what I'm doing there as well. So I go there every every two months, uh, I would say, two and a half so months. That, and, and also, at the same time, I didn't know that you, you have a uh, originate knee from Indonesia. Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't know that. I just, yeah. uh, I, yeah. I, I, I don't know when it was. I was like, oh, he's from Indonesia. I didn't know that. <laughs> I, I think I saw a picture of your father. Yeah, yeah, it could be. My father's from there. Somewhere? Yeah, my father was born there, but he's already mixed. So it's mixed Indonesian, mixed, mixed Dutch. And he was born there and he, he lived there till he was 14 years old. And then he moved back to Holland. And, and your uh, mom, she's... Uh, mom's Dutch. No, she's Dutch, yeah. And so you I'm speak the bit. language of Indonesia? I, I can speak, yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? Uh, yeah, so I didn't know. I was like, oh, he's from Indonesia, you know? <laughs> you know? We have so a lot of ethnic in Belgium or in Holland. Uh, yeah, yeah. Have you been there? What do you say? Have you been in Indonesia and Bali or something? No, never. Oh, Maybe one day with my wife, we will see. Uh, we talked a lot about to do uh, Bali one day, but uh, yeah, really nice. We will see. Now we're trying to do baby, uh, so uh, ah, that's more important. <laughs> many things. Uh, sometimes you you cannot make this like that and saying, uh, okay, uh, I'm gonna do this. Uh, Sometimes you have difficult time, and that's the part of the life. So, um, yeah. so how are things with you? You're still training? You're still teaching people? Still my uh, listen, um, normally I stop it, but uh, I have some uh, clients, uh, some good clients, uh, rich people. Yeah. They, they really ask. It's been a long time that I train with them, and, and they ask me all the time to train. So I'm still doing this. You know, it's... Uh, But it's not for free. Money is always money, you know. But uh, and and I like teaching. I really like teaching. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. But I don't have time anymore like uh, it was before. But uh, and my background is more more Dutch kickbox, more kickboxing, yeah. Dutch kickboxing. But uh, but I'm uh, I'm um, I did also some MMA fight, but uh, I was not a big uh, big level. But uh, but. We, we, we did many things, but uh, today, um, yeah, I'm still giving class. You know what? Uh, even I can say it's giving class, it's, that's the part of to uh, make my mind uh, zero. Yeah, yeah, that's good. So to especially when you're doing, like, for example, if you do running or if you go on a bike, you can still think, right? You can but make if you're the, doing, yeah, like, the fight sports, then it's exactly. really, you have to switch up your mind and only dedicate to fighting. Some some of them, you know, they are coach and they still coach 10 years after, 20 years after, 30 years after, 40 years after. No, I'm, I already moved that step. Uh, yeah. But training, it's always good. Yeah. And um, uh, Martin, you know, many people know you. You have uh, a lot of story, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of story, a lot of uh, accomplish, a lot of uh, accomplishment, uh, a lot of. Um, you. you have many things, many story. Uh, you. Uh, You did the Kyokushin Kai in the past, uh, you did Beijing, you did uh, MMA fights, uh, you were, uh, you trained at Golden Glory, you were uh, in the corner of all those biggest fighters uh, in the world, you had great time at Pride everywhere, yeah. and, uh, and, 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 and uh, you were also working for Glory, yeah. and uh, did you know that I was organizing uh, all the Each Your Time events? Oh, yeah, yeah, I know that, yeah, in Brussels, right? So, uh, So also uh, after that, when it became glory, so uh, so you yeah. were also working over there. You uh, yeah. you did some commentator at Veronica, yeah, yeah, and yeah. <laughs> and I was still happy to see you back again uh, with Gokan Saki. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was nice to see you back again and to be uh, there, uh, not as a manager but also as a cornerman. Yeah. Uh, it was nice to see that, and and especially for his first uh, UFC debut, uh, which uh, he win the fight. So yeah. it was really nice to see that, and uh, and I'm happy. I'm happy that everything is going good for you. Thank uh, you. Uh, and I hope that your uh, your fit or smart mirror are gonna be uh, good in the future. Thank you. And, um, and that is, you know, it was. Uh, I just wanted to talk the small things uh, about that. So were you still managing also? You told me already this, so I don't have a lot of questions. Great. And, uh, and Saturday today, so I don't want to take your time more. No problem. Thanks so much. It was good But to talk to you again. Let's let's finish this um, this uh, COVID things all this period, and let's share a, a nice table together. Uh, yeah, let's do that. 
<laughs> Hope to see you soon, my friend. Thank you. Bye-bye. Uh, so, I got Martin at the end. Very nice guy, Martin. So, thank you very much for everybody. As I told you, I'm not a journalist, but uh, I'm trying just to share some few things. So, uh, with uh, Mark it was uh, long, not a little bit long, but it was really long. But uh, it's always nice to, 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 to share some uh, experience, everything. And uh, let's keep in touch for next week. I will have uh, three, four more guests, surprise guests. So, and I hope the network is not going to be bad. And uh, so again, thank you. I wish you a good weekend. Bye-bye.